people who are used to organizing their lives in Excel, at some point wish Excel could include a timer or a stopwatch to help keep track of common tasks. Also on its own, Excel doesn't have a function to create a countdown timer. However, it's possible to write a very simple code to perform these functionalities. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to create a timer in Excel that counts the elapsed time, or a countdown that counts the remaining time. I'll show you how to create the functionality in a simple format, and we'll then make it much more creative and attractive. You will have it working in the background without interfering with your regular work in Excel. You can either build it from scratch or you can copy my project, paste and customize in your Excel worksheets to be used in so many situations. So let's see how we create a timer in Excel. Here is my finished project and I created a simple timer and a simple countdown. So this simple timer can be controlled by these three buttons. If I click on the run button, then the timer starts to run. I can pause the timer by clicking on the pause button, and then I can resume the timer one more time by clicking on the play button. I can pause it, and I can reset it by clicking on the reset button. I'm resetting it back to zero. Using a pretty close code, I created on another sheet a countdown timer, so if I click on the run button, it's counting down. I can pause my timer, and I can reset it back to 15 minutes. I can change the number to anything I want. This is the simple project, but with a little bit more doing, I can make it a lot more attractive and useful, so on another sheet, I created a digital clock which shows the date and time, and I can start my timer by clicking on the start button. I can pause it by clicking on the pause button, and I can reset my timer as I did in the main project. I can also use my countdown timer as I did in this worksheet. When I am away of my desk, I'm using the countdown timer as an alternate to my screen saver so that it shows my colleagues when I'll be back to my desk. So if I run the countdown, I'm going to stop it and I can reset it by clicking on the reset button. We want to build this project from ground up in Excel, so I'm going to switch to my start file. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video. This file consists of three sheets. So I have the timer sheet where I'll be creating my timer. I have the countdown sheet where I'll be creating my countdown. And then I added a resource sheet which includes all the pictures, all the shapes that I'll be using for creating the code. And it includes the codes as well in case you want to copy it and paste it in your Excel file after customizing it. Let's get started. On the timer worksheet, I just added these three buttons that I'll be using for triggering the macro. These are simple shapes that I created in PowerPoint by merging shapes together, and then I copied them, I resized them, and I pasted them into Excel as pictures. And because in this project, I'll be creating a timer in cell C6 to E7, so I would like to start by merging these cells. I select from C6 to E7, and then I click on the Merge command, and now I would like to apply some formatting to this cell. I want to format it as time, so I open the Format Cell dialog box Control 1, and here I select the Time category, and I want to select this time. I hit OK, and now I would like to enter a value, so I'll be typing 0, colon, 00, zero colon, 00, zero, which means 12 a.m. I want to format this number, so I want to change the font type, I'll make it impact, that will be a nice font for my timer, 
and then I hit enter. I want to change the font size. Let's say I'll make it 36. And now I want to center it up and down and right and left, and I'm fine with this formatting. I want to do the same exact thing on the CD worksheet. So I click on CD, and I'm merging the cells from C6 to E7, and I click on the Merge and Center command. I go back to Timer, I copy Control c and then I go back to CD, and I paste Control v instead of redoing the same steps. And then I want to add a border to each one of these cells, so I open the Format Cell dialog box one more time, Control one I click on the Borders tab, and for my timer, I want to select a line style. I change the color to blue, and I want to apply it as an outline border, and I hit OK. I go to the CD, I want to apply a border as well, so I hit Control-1, I select a border style, I'll be selecting a dark red color, and then I'll be applying it to the outline, and then I hit OK. I prepared for creating my timer, whether for the timer or the countdown. I need to create three codes in VBA, extremely simple codes. If you are unable to create the codes, then you can go to the resources sheet and copy the code and paste it in your Visual Basic Editor. But note that each sheet has a name. The first one is timer, the second one is CD, because I'll be referring to these names when I create my code. I can also refer to the sheets by number, that will be number one, CD will be number two. For each one of the functionalities, whether the timer or the countdown, I need to create three codes. A code that will be attached to the run button that will start the timer, and a code that will pause the timer, and another one that will reset the timer to zero. So let's see how we create these codes, but before I do, I want to talk about two functionalities that I'll be using in my code. When I run the code by clicking on the run button, I want the user to be able to use the Excel worksheet as regular, so I use a command called the do events. Do events is an Excel VBA command that temporarily pauses the execution of the macro to refresh the screen so that I can see the counting in cell C6. At the same time, it can allow the user to interact with the Excel spreadsheet while the macro is running on the very same workbook. The second keyword that I'll be using is a function, date add, because actually what you see here is a time, and time is a decimal fraction of a day. So I want to keep adding one second to my timer, so I'll be using the date add function. The date add will ask me, what interval would you like to add? Would you like to add seconds, minutes, hours, weeks, days, months, years? I want to add seconds. How many seconds would you like to add every time we run the code? I want to keep adding a second every one second. So let's see how we create this code in the Visual Basic. To switch to the Visual Basic, I hit Alt F11. In the Visual Basic Editor, I want to create a module and name it. So I go to Insert and select Module. I can use the shortcut Alt IM. In the Properties window, I want to name my module. So I can select the module and I'm going to name this one Timer. And then I hit Enter. If you don't see the Properties window, you can bring it back by hitting the F4 key. I start my code by creating a variable. A variable is a container that stores a value. And the variable I'll be creating will be storing one of two things, a true or a false. So it's called a Boolean data type. If this variable is storing a true, I want the timer to run. If this variable is storing a false, then I want to stop the timer. I'm declaring the variable here at the top by using the keyword dim, and I can give it any name I like. I can name it Nabil, I can name it Y, I can name it X. I'm going to name my variable A. You can use any name you like. And then I specify the data type by saying as Boolean. Why did I declare the variable here at the top? Because I want the scope of this variable to be the entire module. So if I create multiple sub-procedures, I can refer to this variable. And then I start creating my first code that starts the timer. So I type sub start timer, and when I hit enter, sub turns blue, an opening and a closing bracket will be added, and sub will be added as well. 
And because I want to use this code to run the timer, then I need to set the value for a, my variable, so I type a equals to. Now I'll be repeating a set of steps that will be performed on cell C6, where I created my timer. I'll be repeating the same set of steps. I'll be looping over the same instructions. And to loop over instructions, I type do, and then I hit enter, and I type loop. Do loop, what does it mean? It means I want to keep repeating the instructions that I'll be writing between the do and loop. But I don't want to keep running these instructions forever, so I need to add a stopper. I can write do while a equals true, or I can simply write do while a and it's perceived as true by the application. Between the do and loop, I write my instructions. What do you want to do? I want to wait a second, then add a second to the number in cell C6. Wait a second then add a second and keep repeating these instructions. I want to wait a second, so I type application.wait and in brackets, now plus one second. So I type in a set of number sign 12 colon 00 colon 01 space am and a number sign and then I close the bracket. This line of code will wait for one second. After waiting for one second, what do you want to happen? Well, I want to add to the contents of cell C6. I want to add one second. So I type in sheet number one, counting from the left. That's an index number. I could type in double quotation instead of one, timer. That's the name of the worksheet. And then in cell, row number six, column C, I want to use the date add function. The date add requires three arguments. The first argument, what interval would you like to add? I want to add seconds, so I type S in double quotation, and then comma. What's the number of seconds you want to add? I want to add one single second, and then comma. To which date you want to add it? I want to add it to sheets number one, dot cells, and in brackets, the row number is six, and the column is C, and I close the bracket and I want to close the bracket for the date add. And because the date add returns a date value, I want to format it so that it matches the formatting in cell C6. So I'm going to include all this part in a format function that will return the same exact formatting. I included the date add in a format function and at the very end I type a comma and in double quotation hour, minute, second, and I close the bracket for the format function. I finished creating my code. What does this code do? It will keep repeating anything between the do and loop so long as my variable equals true. While repeating these instructions, I want two things to happen. The changes that happen in cell C6, I want to be able to see them in the worksheet, and at the same time, I want the user to interact with the worksheet and continue the work as always. So I'm going to add a do events command before this line. So I type do events. And I finished creating my first code. Now I want to create the code that poses the timer. And this code will simply change the value of the variable from true to false. So let's create this code. Sub pose timer a equals false. That's all. When a equals false, then the timer will be paused. Finally, I want to create the code that resets the timer back to zero. Sub reset timer, a equals false. And for cell C6, in sheets one, I want the value to be equal to zero. And I finished creating my three codes. Now let's go and attach these codes to the three buttons in Excel and test them. To switch to Excel, I click on the Excel icon to the left side of the toolbar, or I can use the same shortcut, Alt F11. I'm back to Excel. I select the Play button, and then I right click and select Assign Macro. Which macro do you want to attach? I want to select the Start Timer, and then I hit OK. I select the next button, the Pause button, and right click Assign Macro, and this one will be the Pause Timer Macro, and then I hit OK. And then I repeat for the last one, I right click, and then I want to assign a macro, and this one should be the reset timer, and then I hit OK. Now I want to test my timer, so I click on the Run button, 
and my timer is working just fine. It keeps counting the elapsed time. If you want to pause this timer, you click on the pause button. So if you come back few seconds or few minutes later and rerun the timer, then it will count from the point where it stopped. I can pause it one more time, and then I can reset it back to zero to use it in a different situation. I created my timer that counts the elapsed time. Now I want to create my timer that counts down from a certain number of minutes back to zero. Let's say I want to set the timer to start from 15 minutes back to zero. Now I'm ready to modify my code. I don't have to start recreating the code from scratch. I set it to 15 minutes. You can set it to any amount of time you want. Now I want to switch to my Visual Basic Editor, create another module, paste the same codes one more time, and just make few modifications. To switch to the Visual Basic Editor, I hit Alt F11. I want to create a new module, so I click on the Insert menu and select Module. Alternatively, I can use the shortcut Alt I M. A new module is created. I want to name it Countdown, and then I hit Enter. I copied the previous code, and I'm going to paste it here, Control V. We need to make six modifications. Modification number one is to change the name of the variable in every location I used it, and I'm going to name this one B. So I changed every occurrence of the variable named A, I changed it to B. The second thing I want to do is to change the name of the subroutines. Instead of start timer, I'm going to change it to start countdown, pause countdown, and reset countdown. Now that I changed the names of the different subroutines, I want to change the sheet name. This is the second sheet from the left side, so I change instead of sheets 1, I make it sheet 2. You can type the tab name in double quotes. In every occurrence where I had sheets 1, I changed it to sheets 2. The next thing I want to do, would you like to add a second? No, I don't want to add a second. I want to subtract a second because this is a countdown. So in this line of code, instead of adding one, I'll be typing a minus sign because I want to subtract one. The final thing you want to do when you reset the countdown timer, you need to reset it to the same number you type in the worksheet in cell C6. I want to reset it back to 15 minutes. Now I'm ready to test my codes. I'm going to switch to Excel. I hit Alt F11 or I click on the Excel icon. I want to select the Run button and right click and assign macro. This time I'm assigning the Start Countdown and I hit OK. And then I select the Pause button. I right click and assign macro. And this one will be the Pause Countdown. And then I hit OK. And the last one, right click, assign macro. And I want to reset the countdown and I hit OK. I'm ready to test my countdown, so I'm going to click on the play button or the run button, and now the countdown is counting down by second. If you wish to pause it, you click on the pause button, and when you click on the run button one more time, it will resume from where you stopped it, and finally, you can reset your countdown. So I click on pause, and then I click on reset, and I'm resetting my countdown. The final thing I want to do to my countdown timer code is that when it reaches zero, I want to stop the countdown because I don't want to count negative numbers. And to do that, I'll switch to my Visual Basic Editor, Alt F11. I'll click to the right side of Do Events. I hit Enter, and I'll be adding a conditional statement that says, if this sheet, sheet CD, I could use sheet CD or sheet 2, whatever you want, I'm going to make it sheet 2. In cell C6, if the value reaches one second, then exits up. And I would have finished creating this code. I'll close my Visual Basic Editor, and I'm back to Excel. We created the simple version of the timer, and we created the simple version of the countdown, we can take our project to a completely different level by adding a little artistic touch that will make it a digital clock 
and at the same time, it will add more functionality. I added already in the resources sheet all the shapes that we need. So I created this shape that looks like a digital clock by combining and merging shapes in PowerPoint. So I'm going to copy them and I created three buttons. I'm going to copy them as well. So I press Control and click on the three buttons. I'm going to copy them and paste them to the timer worksheet. Control V. I positioned them on top of my simple timer. I also want to move these shapes. These are rectangles where I type some text. They don't have any functionality yet. I'm positioning them in place. I'll be adding the functionality. I'll be assigning the macros in a few seconds. But before I do, this will be a digital clock and a timer. So I wanted to show the date. And to show the date, I'm going to select cell K1, and I'll be creating a today function, equal today. And then I hit tab, I close the bracket, and then hit enter. I want to format the date, so I hit Control 1 to open the format cell dialog box. I click on the number tab, I click on custom, and then under type, I'm going to write the code DDD for the date abbreviated, so you can keep an eye here on the sample, on the preview, and then a space, DD to show me the date in digits, and then a space, I want the month abbreviated, so I type three M's, M, 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 and then I want a space, I want the four digits for the year, so I type Y, 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 and here I see a preview of the date, I hit OK, and I'm fine. I don't want this date to appear, so I'm going to change its color to white, but I'll be referring to this cell. Let's refer to the timer that we have in cell C6 behind the digital clock. And to do that, I need to create two text boxes. I click on the Insert tab of the ribbon, and to the right side of the Insert tab, I click on the down arrow for text box and select text box. So I click and drag to create my text box. And immediately after releasing my mouse, I hit the F2 key. Look what happens when I hit the F2 key. Keep an eye on the formula bar. Now I see the blinking cursor in the formula bar. So I type an equal sign and I type C6. The moment I hit enter, it's bringing the values from cell C6, which are actually my timer. Now I can increase the font size. I can make it an impact font that's suitable for the timer. And I'm going to bump it up, let's say, 248. I can make it even bigger. You can adjust the size the way you like. And I'm going to center it right and left and up and down. I can bump it up even more. I'll make it 60. Now I don't want an outer border. So I click on the format tab, click on shape outline, no outline, and then click on shape fill and no fill. And now I finished creating the first part of my digital clock. Now I want to reference the date that I created in cell K1. So I need another text box. I go to the Insert tab of the ribbon, click on the down arrow for text box, select text box. And I want to position my text box below the time. As I did before, I hit the F2 key. And then I type an equal sign and click on cell K1. Now if I hit Enter, I should see the date. But I need to change the color. I'll make it black. And I want to change the font type to match the time. I'll make it impact. And then I hit enter. I can bump it up and center it right and left and up and down. Now I want to remove the border. So I go to the format tab, shape outline, no outline, shape fill, no fill. And I would have finished creating my digital clock. You can adjust the font size the way you like. Now let's add the functionality. I right click on the start button and assign macro. This macro will be the start timer and then I hit OK. I right click on the pause button, assign macro. And this macro will be the pause timer and then hit OK. And finally, I right click on the reset button, assign macro. And this will be the reset timer. I hit OK and now I'm ready to test the functionality before I do. I want to hide the grid lines, so I go to the View tab, and then take the check away from grid lines, and now we are ready to test. If I click on Start, here is my digital clock. I can pause. 
I can reset. You have all the resources in the resource sheet. So you can use this picture and these shapes to customize the countdown timer so that you can use it as an alternate to a screensaver when you are away of your desk. It shows when you will be back to your desk. To the right side of the resource sheet, you have the code that I created. You can copy them and paste them in your workbook, but don't forget to customize the sheet names. If you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and ring the bell to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching and see you next time.